Good morning. We welcome you here at Fair Park Community Baptist Church. We are so glad to see you today. Glad to have visitors in our midst, and we welcome uh, you to, to uh, church today. And welcome those who are listening on our Facebook uh, church page as we uh, go out in homes that way today. And uh, later we'll place this on our YouTube page as well as our uh, uh, on our uh, church web page. So anyway, thankful that... Uh, you are here with us. We are looking forward to a blessed day in the things of the Lord Jesus Christ and just praying that it's in your heart a, a blessing and encouragement and draws you just a little closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to ask Brother Al to start our day with a prelude. I will live. 
church this morning and hope we can keep the sun shining out there and warm us up because I'm a little chilly in here. So. Al? Good to be here this morning 
and that we can come together to lift up the name of Jesus in a house built on the solid rock. O oh Lord, we are grateful for your compassion, for your love, and for your promise of a day free from our earthly trials, our pain, and our suffering. O oh Lord, but for today we give you and you give us the strength to continue the cause of Christ, to live a, a, a Christian life, and to enable us to resist temptation. We are thankful for your guide, your guidance, uh, and you, you guide us daily for comfort in those times of trials when we are rejected by men and suffer in their evil ways. But Lord, we live a good life, for your blessings are many, and we have friends and family that love us. And we have you that is always on our side and by our side. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And see your neighbor. See your neighbor. Good morning. I guess the uh, since the choir is not singing, pastor said that I can sing, but I don't. I don't think we want to go there. Do our scripture reading today, Daniel five, uh, verses one through five, and uh, verse twenty-seven. King Belshazzar, I knew I'd mess that up. King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles, his wives, and concubines drank from them. As they drank from the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. And then uh, verse 27. Tekiel, you have weighed on the scales and found wanting. Thus ends today's scripture reading. Thank you, Brother Ray. I'm glad for Belshazzar you didn't say Shazam. So anyway, uh, we're glad you're here. And we're looking forward to this opportunity we have in the Lord Jesus Christ to worship Him and love Him today. We want to take some time today for uh, prayer needs. Uh, pray for Brother Sanders Sanderson. He is uh, preaching in Spencerville today, a church that he pastored many years ago. And they've asked him to uh, fill the pulpit today, so he is gone from our number. Um, but uh, he sent this note that he would like read to the church. And uh, the card says, simply grateful. Your thoughtfulness is appreciated. Thank you so very much. God bless you, Pastor Reverend Ron Sanderson. 
And he adds the, this uh, note, I would like to thank Pastor David for his many prayers, visits, love, and concern for my wife Patty during her illness and homegoing. I would also like to thank Pastor for his visits, love, and prayers for my son Randy during his illness and homegoing. And I want to thank my church family and many of our friends of former churches I pastored for their prayers, their memorial gifts, and condolences for me during this most challenging time and loss. May God continue to bless each and every one of you for your kindness to me. And then he posted a verse uh, from a song that we sing around here. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other grounds is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Maranatha, Pastor Reverend Ron Sanderson. So you be in prayer for him, and still I know a, a difficult time for him as he's dealing with that, and we just encourage you to pray for him and, uh, and for um, his uh, other son Terry and family, uh, that God would just bless all of them in a very, very special way. I want to remind you of some other prayer needs. Um, and uh, I uh, wanted to add to the list, remember Laura Postel, she's home quarantining today. She's going to be having a heart uh, catheterization in the morning uh, down at Riverside. So you be in prayer for her that uh, God would, uh, would just watch over her during this time and pray that that's successful. And then uh, I know, uh, remember Al and Renee, uh, they were, I think, trying to do the twist anyway, Renee twisted her knee. I don't know how she did it, but anyway, in the car. Okay, all right, pray for her. She's got a twisted knee. And pray for Al, a health concern as he uh, sees the doctor uh, and some testing this week. So just pray that God would bless them. And uh, then also uh, Becky Varner, who we have on our prayer list, a, a member of our church. And anyway, she continues to go through uh, 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 dialysis. Her brother, Michael, uh, uh, has been dealing with cancer and they've just found that this cancer has spread quite a bit and so it's now considered advanced cancer so we ask you to uh, be in prayer for Michael Varner uh, as well as Becky Varner that God would just bless them in a very very special way uh, then uh, Angie McGraw is doing better and back in church and uh, and we're thankful that she is uh, is feeling better and and if you would also my sister was moved last night from uh, Riverside. She's now at Marion Point Nursing Home on Bell Fountain in room 301. Uh, and uh, anyway, I just got word of that this morning, so I knew they were moving her late last night was the plan. So anyway, they did get her here, and so I'll be going to see her after, uh, after services. But uh, a little better, still infection, and still a long way on recovery. So please uh, pray for her and you're certainly welcome to stop in and see her. I know she would, uh, she would love that and appreciate that. Uh, also pray for Nancy Jenkins, uh, not feeling well. Linda Shiflett is uh, undergoing uh, radiation treatments, and I think there are some 20 treatments, as I understand, that she has to uh, go through, and they'll be uh, Monday through Friday for the next several weeks to get that accomplished. So please, please pray for her. Uh, and also Cheryl Pennington, uh, undergoing uh, uh, very soon a uh, foot operation uh, to try to help with that. Also, Jeff Ansball, good news. Uh, he uh, uh, got a, uh, a CCT scan, CTCCUR, I don't know, anyway, one of those scans. <laughs> and, but anyway, it's good news. Uh, it, uh, it showed, uh, it appears to be nothing wrong with the heart, and so we're thankful for that. So couple other possibilities they're going to be checking so you pray for him uh, and uh, also uh, uh, Rosemary Stower is doing better I spoke with her on the phone this week and she is uh, uh, continuing to heal and and uh, from the surgery and they think they got all the cancer and so we're thankful for that uh, John uh, uh, Cockrell is still in need of prayers Bob Johnston is here and doing better the Lord and my son Brian will be going back to work this week and so appreciate your prayers for his back uh, and Cheryl Chevalier is here there she is yeah. <laughs> 
I'm sorry for laughing. I Cheryl leaned to the to the right so I could see her, and then Norman moved what she thought would be the right way, but it was right in front of her. But that's okay. Anyway, uh, uh, glad glad you're here, and uh, glad you're here too, Norma. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, and uh, so continue to pray for all of these. Bill Scotts here today, doing better. Praise the Lord. And Hazel is uh, back and uh, and smiling. And that's good. And uh, good to see Mary Alice here. And uh, so we praise the Lord for all of these. Uh, continue to pray for the remainder ones on the prayer list. Uh, this afternoon, uh, I'll be going to uh, Cardington and uh, my friend Lauren Radel that uh, passed away unexpectedly. A visitation for him is this afternoon at the uh, Windfall Lutheran Church there. And then tomorrow morning, I'll be uh, taking care of part of that funeral there at and so you pray for me and for the family that God would bless uh, that time as we honor him uh, and uh, his life and then Saturday uh, uh, and this will be just for the family Kathy Edwards will be interred at Meeker Cemetery so I'll be there to conduct services for that so please uh, pray for them as they continue to I know mourn their loss and so just uh, pray that god would bless uh, uh, every other prayer need on there very important please pray for them i know we have a few fat uh, people traveling uh, this weekend so pray for their safe return we pray and um, then it's good to have uh, bill and wanda gray uh, in services today welcome you to church and just glad you're here and uh, pray that we can be a blessing to you so <laughs> All right, any, uh, any other prayer needs that we need to mention today? Yes, one. Yes. Hmm. Yes, he has. Pray for little Eli, if you would. Any other prayer needs today? All right, well, we will certainly take all of these to the Lord in prayer today. Uh, I like what uh, Brother Doug added to our bulletin on the other page. On the, uh, uh, It says, I'd rather be able to pray than to be a great preacher. Jesus Christ never taught his disciples to preach, but only how to pray. D.L. Moody said that. And uh, praying of an important part of our lives and our opportunities to uh, honor those we love and pray for those who are certainly in need we're going to sing fill my cup lord and as we like to do here at fair park we'll sing the course through twice and the second time if you have an unspoken uh, request please lift your hand uh, we'll remember that as we go to the lord in prayer and same for those who are home please uh, lift your hands if you have uh, special needs fill my cup lord Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole as we sing that through one more time fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till I want no more Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Heavenly Father, we go to Thee today, for we know our answers, our sustenance of life, the gift of salvation, all comes from Thee. So Lord, today we need You. 
We pray for these needs that have been mentioned, those who are traveling. We pray for their safety today, Lord, as they uh, travel uh, some in other parts of the country. Just bless them, we pray. And Lord, we certainly pray for these very special prayer needs, for those who have been sick, been in hospitals, or uh, those who are recovering in nursing homes, some in homes. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you'll bless each and every one. Special needs we have mentioned today, Lord, we lift them up very closely to thee. And Lord, we ask also for the many hands that have been raised, the unspoken needs that, Lord, you know and you even now give petition to. So, Lord, thank you for heeding us, loving us, and living in us. And we pray today that as we are gathered here in this place, that, Lord, we believe you have promised where two or three are gathered together, that you would be also. So, Lord, we ask for that sweetness of spirit, for the love of God, and for life in the Lord, that we might live for thee and love one another and reach out and give offers of salvation that only come from above. So, Lord, today, thank you for this day. Thank you for these who are gathered here. And we pray for those who cannot be with us today. Watch over them, love them, and bring them back safely to us, we pray. And Lord, all of this we ask in the blessed, abundant, and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. want to mention just a few needs, or uh, uh, opportunities, I should say, excuse me. Uh, we, uh, we have some things going on even this week. Remind our church council, they'll be meeting on the 13th. Uh, that's uh, tomorrow. Uh, at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, here at the church. Hope you can make it. Next Sunday is Father's Day, and, uh, and we do things a, a, a little differently in the sense that every man who is here uh, will receive a gift, and we have a, uh, a little uh, keychain light that, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to shine it right now in, in somebody's face. I don't know if it's working or not, but anyway, uh, <laughs> it is, okay. <laughs> Okay, so you get this flashlight uh, if you're uh, here next week. And, uh, and by the way, if you get one, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, the first three I pulled out of the box, I thought, none of these work. Well, they had a little paper tag behind the battery I had to pull out. And once I did that, they worked great. So anyway, we have that as a gift to you just to let you know we're glad uh, that uh, you're here with us serving the Lord. Uh, we couldn't do things for a while because of the... Uh, uh, of, of COVID and, and what it did as far as attendance goes. So uh, we want to uh, just in a special way let you know we love you and appreciate you. And so I uh, hope you'll be here for that special time. Uh, the 25th, the last Saturday of the month, our men's uh, prayer uh, breakfast. Uh, men's breakfast will be at 9 a.m. We meet at the Moose, which is over in the Cervex Center, and uh, a, a good breakfast, uh, inexpensive breakfast there, and uh, we hope to see you there this coming, uh, well, two weeks away, excuse me, for, uh, on Saturday uh, for the breakfast. On the uh, 25th of, of uh, June, which is the same day, we're going to be having back here at the church our Marin Association picnic and you are invited to come and participate. Uh, just bring uh, uh, some uh, food to share uh, with others and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have an old fashioned uh, picnic out in our shelter house and that'll be at uh, 11.30 I believe it is on that day. So that's coming up. Then next month, uh, a big event here at our church, our chicken barbecue, July the 30th, uh, Fair Park Community Baptist Church Choir uh, puts this on. This year a little different, and I thought it would be a little easier. So they're just going to have a, a drive-through instead of having the uh, pie auction and, and a couple other things that we normally did. So it will be drive-through service only. Tickets are $10. Uh, see uh, either Cheryl Chevalier or uh, Doug or, or any of us that, uh, that uh, are here will make sure that you get a ticket. But $10 gets you a, a good chicken dinner, uh, and uh, it includes half a chicken. And I can't tell you if it'll be the left half or the right half, but anyway, but it'll be chicken. And then uh, baked beans, uh, coleslaw, rolling butter, dessert, uh, uh, a cookie. And uh, anyway, uh, uh, 
I, I think you'll find it will be delicious. So I uh, hope you'll come and participate with us on 30th of July. And that'll start at 4 in the afternoon, I think. 4 to 7. 4 to 7. So anyway, I uh, hope you can come and be with us. And you can see Doug Chevalier for tickets. He will gladly uh, provide you with some if you'd like to help us in selling those. All right, I think that's all our announcements. Let me also remind you of our food pantry uh, that uh, continues to be a ministry that we have. And that's if you'd like to look and see what we have and, and bring in other items, you can look in the uh, room just as you're going out of the auditorium on the left is our food pantry service. If you know someone who needs some help, please, uh, please let us know or uh, tell them to call us and we certainly would be glad to help them uh, at, uh, in, times of, uh, in a time of need. And also then, let me just remind you and thank you for your tithes, your offerings that you bring in so faithfully. There is an offering plate right by the door. Uh, we are still receiving the offering that way uh, rather than passing the plate just to, again, make services safe uh, for everyone. So, uh, again, thank you for your faithfulness, and uh, we continue to look forward to what we'll be able to do for the Lord Jesus Christ here at Fair Park as we go through uh, these summer months. Uh, we're looking forward to those opportunities. Um, all right, well, let's stand. We're going to sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Brother Al. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, we give these tithes and offering to you. And we pray today, Lord, that you might take them and they might be used mightily of thee. Thank you, Lord, for each one who is here in your house today. And we pray together. We have come to worship Thee. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We want to uh, invite you to sing with us Victory in Jesus. Ruth Ella. <clears throat> Love me. 
Thank you, Ruthella, and thank you all for singing, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, remember uh, Steve Zuspan in your prayers. He has been so faithful, he and his family, since they've joined the church, and he texted me uh, last night just to let him let me know that he's, he's uh, sick, has a cold and a cough, and, and thought he just shouldn't come today. So you pray for him. And then one other prayer need that I uh, should have mentioned, Bill Crabtree. I went and visited with him this week, and uh, Bill's just just uh, having some health issues. And so uh, I know he was do, going to do his best to come and be with us today, but uh, not here. So you pray for Bill that God would just bless him and, and strengthen him, we pray. So I appreciate all your prayers. I really do. I know... Uh, uh, we want to pray for Sherry as well, and I know she's not here today, so we want to pray with, uh, with the family uh, for uh, Roger's wife, Sherry, just that God would bless her as well in a special way. Well, I'm glad you're here, and uh, glad for those who are listening to us by way of our uh, uh, Facebook uh, page, and uh, that we have this opportunity, and uh, later, as I said, uh, I get home, and that's my first mission is to transfer this all over to YouTube, and then it drops into our web page. And so, uh, anyway, we're thankful that we have that opportunity to to uh, minister to a lot that in that manner. By the way, our Facebook page, the church Facebook page, and I don't say much about it, but anyway, we have over 500 people who have signed up that they are listening, and certainly not every week, but but that they're participating in our. Uh, in our services and I, I think that's wonderful I'm glad that we have that opportunity to uh, to reach people uh, not only here in in Ohio but uh, uh, Iowa I know is a place Georgia and Florida and and there are some other states California I know there's some people there listening so we're, we're thankful that God is blessing and that we have that opportunity to uh, to reach into homes and uh, just pray that uh, as we share the Word of God that that those lives are touched and blessed. Well, today, the message is entitled, Weighed in the Balance. Um, I, uh, I think all of us have seen scales. My father used to work uh, at uh, Marion Grain and Supply, which is no longer in business, has been out for a lot of years. But anyway, he worked there. and They had a scale where they would drive a truck as it came in with corn or uh, soybeans, uh, a lot of the product that they brought there to have that dried and processed and prepped uh, to be sent to market, and they would weigh it, and they would weigh it based on the weight of the truck, and then they would, uh, as they emptied the grain out, they would know the, the weight of the grain versus the weight of the truck. And that balance allowed them to know, or the weight if you please, what how much the product weighed. And this message out of Daniel 5, I think, is so important because it deals in the life of all of us in the sense of our humanity, our living, and our doing, whether we are living and serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I think, first of all, I could say it this way. I think every one of us makes decisions. All of us do. We make decisions every day. You made a decision to get up this morning, right? You made a decision to come to church. And we make decisions that take a good amount of judgment. <laughs> Sometimes you look out, you know, open your eye and you look out and you think, oh, it's an awful day. I don't know if I want to do this or not. Have you felt like that? I think we all make judgment calls in life. Good judgments helps you make the right decision. But bad judgment and all of us have been guilty of this, will cause us to make wrong decisions and end up with bad results. And so I want you to listen today because in the Word of God there's some very clear truth about making right decisions. 
about following what is godly and intent and instead of following sometimes our own personal desires. This chapter in the book of Daniel, and the book of Daniel, a great book that deals with prophecy, that deals with, with end times. In this book is a man by the name of Belshazzar. And Belshazzar ruled over Babylon. Babylonia, as it was called in those days. And his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had conquered Israel and had made them captive slaves. And Belshazzar, who took over when Nebuchadnezzar died, was not a very good man. Neither was Nebuchadnezzar, to be honest. And as you come to this fifth chapter, it is an interesting passage. And, and again, I like to give you homework. Go home and read all of the fifth chapter because it will share with you some of the truths about who, who uh, Daniel was and who Belshazzar was and how God interacts in their lives. And so we come to this first part of the message that I wanted to share with you. And, and what is the meaning of the writing on the wall? Now, I didn't have Ray read all of this, but I'm going to, if you'll permit me to, down in verses 24 through verse 30, it says, Then was the part of the hand seen from him, and this writing was written, and it was written on the wall. And this is the writing that was written, Mine, Mine, Tekel, Aparsin. And this is the interpretation of the thing. Mine, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Daniel's explaining to Belshazzar what this, what this meant. He said, Tickle, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. And then Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar that they clothe Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Even though what he had said w was to the, the defeat of Belshazzar, he recognized this man knew what he was talking about. And in that night, that same night, was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. And so we read in that passage what God said, and what God met, and what God did in this land. And I want to explain this to you today because I think it, it really has much weight and merit in our lives and, and, and application of, of how we live our lives. So as those words were written, it's, it, it, really, it really just simply meant God is numbered, God has weighed, and now you will be divided. And this means that he numbered and finished the, the, the strength and time of Babylonia. And God had numbered the days of Belshazzar's kingdom. And by the way, when we talk about this, this isn't just, you know, this is how things are looking. This is how things might fold, unfold. Rather, this is how things transpired. In the book of Daniel chapter 2, I wanted to read one verse of scripture for you, verse 21. And it says there, and this is Daniel speaking, and he says, and he changeth the time, speaking of God. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. And we have to understand that God is involved in the workings of this world. Sometimes we get all frustrated and upset when we see things in this world going haywire. When we see things in this world that just don't add up. When we don't understand the answers in life. But I want you to know God knows and sees. And still His hand is upon this world in this time. And it says in this particular matter that God had numbered the days of his kingdom, of Belshazzar's kingdom, and in the counsel of God, and I want you to hear those words, they are now finished. God said that's the end. That's the conclusion of the matter. 
And that's what the word mene means. It means numbered, and underneath it you can put the score if you were doing addition or subtraction and put finished or zero. And that second word, tikal, it means thou art weighed. It talks about that balancing of life that goes on. It, and it, it's actually found both in the Chaldean language and in the Hebrew language. In the Chaldean language it says thou art weighed. And in the Hebrew it says thou art brought to light. Or you've been exposed if you please. And the king and his actions are weighed in God's divine judgment. Let me explain something to all of us today that God knows our character. He knows just as well what is weighed in the balance. He knows the goldsmith can weigh the gold in, 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 a, in fine scales and determine how much this piece of gold weighs and thus determines how much it is truly worth. And when God does those judgments, let me just simply say God does not give judgment against him until he's pondered the actions of Belshazzar. He says, you've been weighed in the balance and found wanting. And that is the result of God's balancing. That's God who knows our life from beginning to end. That's God who understands who we are and what we do. And then that other word that is mentioned here, abhorrent, it's that word that means dividing or, or taking apart, if you please. And that's said down in verse number 28. It says, Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and to the Persians. And in that, God says, all that you have accomplished, all that you think you've done in your life, it's going to be rent asunder. It's going to be torn apart. And the kingdom would be taken from Belshazzar. Now, let me explain to you this morning something very, very important in this, in this message. When we understand in the life of Belshazzar, here's a man who had succeeded. He had accomplished some things. He carries on in his uh, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, uh, footprints, if you please, and does those things that seemingly would make his kingdom stronger. And I want to say, you never can rule God out of the equation. God doesn't give judgment against him until he's first pondered his actions. Here they are. They've been at a party, basically. And they bring in the gold chalices that were part of the temple that had been torn apart in Jerusalem and had been carried down, ransacked, if you please, down into Babylon. And as those things were, were taken apart, and divided. It, they, they, in this party, they're drinking out of these gold cups. They're, they're partying. Their lives are going on. Look at what we've accomplished. We captured the Israelis. They're, they belong to us. The Israelites are ours. We own them. They're our slaves now. We are powerful, the most powerful men. And God takes those thoughts that come from Belshazzar and from his people and on one side of, of is is really the balance if you please of opportunities it's that that way in which God looks in your life and sees what you do and and how you live and on the other side was put the weight of Belshazzar's sin and as God put those opportunities of living right, of doing right, of being right, and the sin of Belshazzar in the other one, we find that the sin tips the scales. You see, I want us to understand something this morning. We can't depend on earthly balances. We can't assume that certain things will happen or won't happen. There's lots of things in life that go haywire, that go wrong. Sometimes the chain breaks. Or sometimes the wrong weights were used. It was very, uh, a lot of, of, of people who would, who would 
take the balances and would, for instance, was giving uh, money for uh, bringing in a sheep, they would have weights that were were out of uh, were not actually true weights. They they had been they were heavier weights, and so it would look like it balanced out, but it was really a false weight. It was a false accusation. And sometimes in life you get those false accusations, those things that are, are just wrong. And you understand as those weights are applied from man and mankind, they may tell you the wrong thing. And I want you to think this morning and understand from God's Word there's only one balance in the universe that is completely accurate. There's only one thing that measures life and what life is worth. God knows a perfect bushel. I I think we've all seen a bushel of corn, right? Or a perfect peck, a means of measurement. Or a perfect gallon. We've all kind of know what those things are. But sometimes in life we get cheated or others are che- or cheat us. But I want you to know today you cannot cheat God. And there will be a great day of judgment. And we will find out in that day what we learned in school. A bushel weighs a bushel and a peck is worth a peck and a gallon is a gallon. Those are things that we will understand in the presence of God. We'll understand that 16 ounces makes a pound and 120 solid feet make a cord of wood and 2,240 pounds make a ton. And yes, I had to look that up. (laughs) It don't make any more. It don't make any less. And God has that perfect scale in which He knows our lives. I'm not speaking of weights and measures. Steve, Steve Zusband, who is not here today, worked for the weights and measures here in Marion, Ohio. I don't know if you knew that. But he would go around and check and make sure that things were accurate, that they were truly right, and then he would mark it as, as so. And on one side of our life, might you understand it this way in the spiritual realm, there are the opportunities that God gives you. On the other sides are the sins that have happened in your life and certainly happen around you in the world. And down will go the balance. And my friend, the truth is, for all the opportunities given us in this world, the sin of life is heavier than the good things of life. And the balance that falls against those good opportunities that we have always outweighs the good things. And we must understand then that there has to be a means for us to correct that. And that's why Jesus Christ came and why the cross is so important today. Because what He did at the cross was pay for your sins, for your imperfections, for your inaccuracies in life. He came to make those things balance out. One of these days, God will say to the messenger who holds the torch in his hand, and read that in the book of Revelation, he will tell him, burn the world. The world has been weighed and is found wanting. You see, God counts our lives today and he knows our value. Even in the matter of living Christian lives, God will weigh your life. There are two judgments spoken of in the book of Revelation the great white throne judgment in which every sinner in the world must stand and give account because the blood of Christ has not been applied to them. The other one is the judgment seat of Christ. And we will, as Christians, stand and give account of our lives and how we've lived it and how our opportunities. The book of Corinthians talks about about the, the chaff or the imperfections of life will be thrown into the fire and burned and consumed and then gold and silver and precious jewels will survive and that's the blessings that you've accomplished in your life for the Lord Jesus Christ and that's shared with you in eternity. But God will weigh us. On one side, He's going to place the minister and the choir and the deacons in their building. 
And on the other side of the scale, he will, he will look at the value of that church in regards to its consecration to Christ. And what its sympathy is for the lost in the world. And to understand that all of us must give account of our lives as Christians. We don't lose that sight. Someone says, oh, if I'm a Christian, I can just do as I please. Nay, nay. There is still a judgment seat of Christ. There's one other thought I want to share with you, with you today. Or two other thoughts, and I'll make them hurried. It says, mine, mine, tekel, a parson. What does that mean to us today? Well, to someone who is without Jesus Christ, who is in their sin, lost, without the salvation and blood of Jesus Christ cleansing their life, they are lost. And they will face God in His judgment at the great white throne. Voltaire, who was a, who was a, a pronounced atheist, who, who joked at Christianity as he was dying, he said, I am undone by God. I shall go to hell. That was his last words as he died. For those who face God without Christ, that's the choice. At death, the sinner's days are numbered and finished, and that is the word mene. That is finished, done. You can't undo it. You can't change it. Do you notice here, Belshazzar wasn't given an opportunity to correct things. It wasn't like now's the invitation, now's the opportunity to make these things right. It was too late. And that judgment is very simple. In the book of, of Hebrews, it tells us in chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. And after death, the judgment will come where the sinner will be weighed in the balance and truthfully it will go against them. They will be found wanting. The truth of the matter is this spells out a time of punishment of hell for them. After the judgment, the sinner will be cut loose and given as prey to the devil and to his angels. Now none of this is pleasant for me to say, but it's the truth. I want you to notice Belshazzar one more time. Daniel did not give him that opportunity to correct things. He didn't say, hey, Belshazzar, you're messed up here, and that writing of the hand on the wall was a warning. No, it was the sign judgment of God. He didn't give him that opportunity to repent because God had already signed the decree, and that decree said with the writing of his hand, there is no time to, to repent. I think for a lot of people who want to go through life, they think, oh, there will be a chance on my deathbed or there will be an opportunity somewhere down the road. But it might not come. It didn't for Belshazzar. He was in the height of his glory. In the time of his, of his reign as a king, he's enjoying the vestures and, and privileges, that visual aid of being in charge. And it looked like he was a winner. And that's why he's drinking from that gold chalice. He thinks he's won. But the doom of Belshazzar, and that final thought that I want to share with you today, found down in verses 30 and 31, in that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. And Darius the Mede took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old, about 62 years old. Belshazzar died that night. Judgment came for him that night. And even in that event of Belshazzar's death, we're reminded that we don't know the hour, the moment when God will judge against us, when life will end on earth. In that night, his heart was merry with wine. He found his end from those that had besieged the city. They were outside and, and the walls of Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom was massive. They were thick walls. Nobody can get in here. But the Medes took the city that night. He could find, he could not find a place so secret that he could escape that judgment. And might I compare it to this today? The death of a sinner. You have been warned 
and that doom could be very close. Belshazzar thought he was safe in the city. You may think yourself secure. God's not after me right now. Things are going to be okay. But my friend, judgment comes. The truth is, you can't hide from God. And every last one of us today are weighed in the balances and found wanting. And the only difference for us today is to know that Jesus Christ died on the cross to save us from our sins. He came to redeem us and to give us eternal life. And that choice is trusting in Him. He becomes that weight for us. He becomes that impossible that we cannot do ourselves. Let me tell you this story and I'm done. There was a woman who was convicted of witchcraft in Salem, Massachusetts. But her name was cleared some three centuries later. Massachusetts lawmakers legally pardoned a woman by the name of Elizabeth Johnson, Jr. She was convicted. That went all the way back to 1693. She was sentenced to death amid the Salem witch trials. And she is the final accused witch who was then cleared, the Associated Press reported. That pardon took 300 years in the making. And it turned out a group of 8th graders at a North Andover middle school in North Andover, Massachusetts, were studying the era and discovered this woman who had not been pardoned. And they began researching a way to rectify the situation. And the result was a piece of legislation which righted the wrong. This woman had been falsely accused. I guess I want to tell you this. In this life, there are judgments that happen against each of us. Sometimes they are incorrect. Sometimes they are wrong. But there is a God in heaven who knows. And one day you'll stand before him and give account of your life. He'll reveal those things that someone else thought were wrong. He'll also reveal those things which are right. And when you look at what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that he comes to redeem all of us. That he comes to rescue us, to redeem us, and to give us life. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1, My dear children, I write to you so that you will not sin, but if you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. I'm glad though our sins weigh so heavy against us, there is a God in heaven who forgives us and loves us and gives us that hope of eternal salvation. That's what Jesus did. Oh, I hope today your trust is in Him. You love Him and live for Him and know Him. But if not, I invite you to know Jesus as Savior. We're going to sing an invitation song. And we're going to do this a little differently. We're just going to sing the first verse, Ruth Ella. He hideth my soul. And as we sing this song, this first verse, I want you to look into your heart and your life. And make sure that you've asked God for forgiveness of your sin. And if not, I want you to do it today. As you walk out of here, you can, you can whisper to me, Pastor, things are right now with my Savior. And those who are listening on the radio, on the, on the program today, the same for you. I hope you'll know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Ruth Ella, come and lead us as we sing this one verse. Please stand with us. He hideth my soul.
today, I hope you've put your life in the Lord's hand, that you've given your heart to Him. And if you have done that, then my friend, all is well, for He forgives the most horrible, reprehensible sin, down to the little, small, tiny sin, like stealing the cookie out of the cookie jar. They're all under the blood if you've trusted in Christ as your Savior. I hope you know Him today. Weighed in the balance, this world one day will give answer to God of their life, of their living, of their rejection of Him. And God will so judge those who do not follow Him for eternity. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you for being here with us today. A hard message, but one we need to hear. And need to be reminded that we live in this grace period, that opportunity to trust in Christ as our Lord and Savior before that day comes where all men appear before Him. Let's, uh, let's, as we pray today, just pray that God's blessings will rest upon each one that are here and just pray that as we go from this place, we trust in Him, our Lord and our Savior, to live for Him. Brother Ray Mabry, would you dismiss us in prayer, please, sir? Thank you.